Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from Storm Malik and from Storm Cory, which is arriving tomorrow. We're seeing consecutive storms this weekend as the mundane high pressure breaks down with really stormy conditions. Now, it's very blustery out there at the moment. Storm Cory is moving through tomorrow evening into Monday and there's going to be both a heavy rain and snow event plus very strong 80, 90 mile per hour gusts as well. Um, whereas so far, Storm Malik has generally been a windstorm with the precipitation. As we have a look on the precipitation radar, it's much further northwards and eastwards into Scandinavia and Denmark. It's looking very stormy over the next couple of weeks, as we'll see with the long range forecast towards the end of the video as well. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Also do check out channel membership, in, in that link is in the description as well. Now, across the Atlantic, we are having a very lively period. Now, we have Storm Malik, which is centred just to our north, sort of towards western parts of Norway, between Iceland and Norway, really, just centred up here. And the main weather fronts are now positioned in parts of Eastern Europe, Denmark and Scandinavia. And it was named by the Danish Met Office. And you can see the heavy snow and heavy rain moving through. But of course, around the low pressure system, we have bitterly cold and strong winds. And we're now seeing these convective showers with that real blustery wind moving in from the north. We still have an amber warning in force, spraying down a lot of the eastern side of Scotland and into northeast England. It was updated earlier this morning into northeast England as well. We're seeing snow and rain showers, and it's going to be really blustery and unsettled out there. Um, but as I said, this is mainly a wind event. We did see a bit of rain spread through earlier this morning, overnight, but generally it's been the wind. And if you are, have been out there so far today, you'd have seen it is very blustery out there, um, a lot windier than we've had recently. Quite a shock to the system really and some areas across the north i think northumberland exposed areas of northumberland in northern england have seen the strongest gusts so far i think it was 93 mile per hour gusts most areas only are seeing around 40 to 60 mile per hour gusts but as i said some localized areas are seeing much higher but as i said the atlantic is very active at the moment and we go across to northeast america and you can see a major major winter storm dropping 20, 30 centimetres widely, and some areas in sort of the bullseye zone, which is parts of Nova Scotia, all the way down through the Boston area, even into parts of New York, potentially, out along Long Island, we could be seeing the potential of around half a metre of snow, two, three feet of snow, um, exceptional, and it's all because of this jet stream, the tropospheric polar vortex powering up, sending the jet stream further southwards, Picking up moisture out from the mid-Atlantic, combining with that bitterly cold air, which is at its sort of peak for the winter, and we're seeing these big storms develop. And this low that is affecting America at the moment will be coming to the UK in a few days' time. Now, it will not be a winter storm, um, or even a named storm probably by then, but still will be bringing unsettled conditions um, and keeping us really quite uh, stormy and low pressure dominated. So the Atlantic is really livening up at the moment with storms on both sides of the Atlantic, eastern and western side. Um, again, I think I'd rather be in the American storm with um, areas seeing 20, 30 centimetres of snow. I'd much rather be seeing snow, uh, but of course, it's very dangerous conditions there as well. And you can see the biggest thing about this nor'easter we're seeing is it's all snow. That's one of the big things about nor'easter. Sometimes, uh, well, normally, actually, we have a rain-snow divide, and that rain-snow divide is normally along the east coast. Air is just in Lansing, the heaviest snow, but you can see here the snow is falling even out into the Atlantic. Just shows how, just shows how much of a snow event that is. But if we do focus on the on Storm Malik um, today, but we'll also have a look of at Storm Cory. Now, if we do have a look at the latest from Met Office Twitter, you can see Storm Cory has been named by the Met Office. Of course, Malik was named by the Danish Met Office, and it was named only a few hours ago, about three hours ago, as the time of recording this. Um, again, Sunday into Monday, very unsettled weather. And once again, we could be seeing yellow and amber warnings. Currently, we only have yellow warnings, but I do suspect we'll be seeing some amber warnings, especially across Northern England and Scotland again. It looks like the bullseye area for wind and for the rain and snow is going to be across Scotland and Northern England once again, similar to Storm Malik. But 
even further southwards, we will still be seeing some rain, some blustery winds, um, and it's going to be a lot, of, a big change to what we've had recently. Now, if we do have a look at the weather warnings, you can see right now we do have a widespread yellow and an amber warning. Now, this yellow warning is covering Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Northern England. Strong westerly winds will bring some disruption on Saturday to Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland and Northern England. This, will, this is expiring in about an hour's time as I'm recording this. The amber warning, of course, is expiring at the same time, but it was extended further southwards. So, Storm Malik is coming sort of the end of its peak severity, but we still could be seeing some powerful gusts out there. And of course, trees and some power lines and some structures may have been weakened by the very, uh, very strong winds earlier today. And we, it, all it needs is a little bit of a push and it could topple even in uh, not significant gust. So make sure you do stay tuned and of course uh, be aware out there um, as it still can be dangerous even when these warnings do subside but we see a return to warnings on sunday into monday widespread yellow warning for most of northern england wales into east anglia northern or northern edge of northern ireland and all of scotland from 6 p.m tomorrow until midday on monday strong winds will likely cause some just travel disruption and generate some large and dangerous waves around the coasts Again, Sunday, on Sunday evening, a, a spell of strong northwesterly winds is likely to develop across western Scotland and then progress southeastwards, eventually easing from the North Sea. 50 to 60 mile per hour for a time, 60 to 70 mile per hour gusts potentially inland, and 70 to 80 are on exposed coasts and hills. You can see very close to an amber warning, so I'm expecting when the Met Office update this today, because as you can see, um, um, as you can see, it hasn't been updated um, since yesterday when it was issued. Uh, 10 30 so it will be updated again today and i suspect there will be a region within this that goes amber and i do suspect it will probably be over central northern scotland as we'll see with the uk met office run now now if we do have a look at the uk met office run this is from 3 a.m this morning so we will see the peak gusts from storm malik and storm cory do you see the peak gusts were around 8 9 a.m this morning clearing and you can see that sort of over northumberland in northern england 90 five miles per hour gusts from the uk met office run and widely 60 70 in the north 40 50 elsewhere now it's going to move through we're still going to see some stronger gusts this afternoon but it's going to be turning quite mundane actually um and we're going to be seeing some very light winds tonight could be a frost in places um especially in sort of inland areas um in the north but not exclusively even in the south once the cold does reach it however as we head through sunday those winds are really going to pick up and you can see it's an intense band of winds just across western northern Scotland, 90 mile per hour around the hook of the low pressure system, significant winds, as strong as Storm Malik, if not a little bit stronger, and coupled with the heavy rain and snow, there could be even, even more severe conditions, um, widespread severe conditions, and of course, 60, 70 mile per hour widely, and I said 80 to 90 mile per hour in that bullseye area, and even in the south, once again, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds overnight Sunday into Monday. Luckily, the strongest winds look likely to be spreading through Sunday night into, into early hours of Monday so shouldn't be affecting too many people's days but you may be waking up into the uh, up in the morning with some trees down in places some branches down uh, especially across northern Scotland and northern England um, and of course there could be some disruption from that for Monday morning but for rush hour on Monday morning things should slowly be easing still be from significant gusts potentially on eastern coast areas and over higher ground still could see 50 60 mile per hour and over the scottish highlands it's still showing 80 or 90 mile per hour gusts but again that'll be very very isolated but by the afternoon things should clear once again before we see more low pressure systems move through tuesday wednesday but at the moment they're not looking as severe as the lows we have moving through at the moment and through um, with storm cory tomorrow now, if we do have a look at the precipitation, you'll be able to see that we do have um, very, very heavy rain coming through this as well. And you can see only light rain moving through this morning. Um, and then you can see heavy showers moving through the rest of today. Um, but they're not going to be too significant. As I said, this is mainly a wind event, Storm Malik. But as we head through this evening, um, into tomorrow, you can start to see the weather fronts pushing into parts of western Scotland. Significant rain heavy blustery rain cold front sweeping through there could be some squally features within that and heavy snow across scottish highlands and even into parts of northern england 
significant conditions from this and you can see that hook in the low and that's where we're going to see the strongest winds across northern and western scotland as it sweeps through we'll still be seeing some heavy showers across sunday evening into the south and widespread convective blustery showers and snow across northern england and scotland before things generally die down a little bit but we stay very unsettled with still some gusty conditions but not quite as strong uh, and plenty of rain especially further northwards southwards we will be seeing rain at times over the next week but it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any massive weather fronts with the uh, jet stream not shifted as far southwards as it's likely to go within the next couple of weeks as we'll see with the longer range models in a minute but you can just see continued precipitation moving through showers areas of cold air areas of milder air as well and as i said if we have a look at the max temperatures you can see that we still do have um some milder air around today but it's going to be turning colder from this evening and you're going to see temperatures dropping to around freezing over the course of this evening especially across northern areas but not exclusively we could even see it further southwards potentially through early hours of tomorrow so as i said could be another frost around but as we head through sunday as that uh, as storm Corrie moves in we could be seeing snow of course across northern england a brief milder warm front but still going to remain pretty chilly highs around six seven on sunday and monday again potentially for a bit of a frost over the northern areas and in monday afternoon pretty chilly only four to six seven degrees so yeah pretty chilly day and then for tuesday again temperatures around 10 11 degrees so i said it's going to be real up and down um by wednesday temperatures are going to be getting up to 11 or 12 in the south four or five in the north and by thursday it does look like cold air will be sweeping back in from the northwest and things could be turning colder once again for thursday into friday so it's looking very very up and down over the next couple of days in terms of temperatures but one thing is consistent it's going to be very stormy the next couple of days and then it's going to remain unsettled blustery with rain especially in the north now if we do have a look at the gfs gm and eastern vf have a look at the longer term forecast now you can see storm um malik moving through at the moment it's clearing out into Europe, and then you see that small feature just over northern Scotland. That is Storm Corrie, and if we do zoom in, you can see that. Not a massively deep low pressure system, but it's a very small, isolated feature that has really tight isobars around it, and that's why we're going to be seeing very strong winds um, and a named storm, of course. Now, if we do go back up to the European look, you can see generally we stay very unsettled, and we continually to see um just westerly winds again polar maritime air masses for a time but you can see that jet stream is slowly shifting further southwards and eventually you can see all those blues even get to southern england by the end of the run and we could be seeing more named storms over the next couple of weeks keeping things extremely unsettled there's going to be polar maritime air masses for times for, for, for a period of time so we are likely to see some wintriness returning in the north but we will see milder weather um, as well in intervals but any widespread cold weather not looking likely over the next week or two uh, blocking is trying to return over the north pole but at this stage it's not going to be returning in our favor to be giving anything too significant in terms of widespread cold now if we do have a look at the gm run see how that does compare again you can see storm malik and storm Corrie moving through and then you can see westerly northwesterly winds very unsettled and pretty chilly with that air mass coming in from greenland but of course as i said coming off across a long sea track it's going to get modified quite significantly and things are still going to be chilly but not massively cold and we'll see of course see milder sectors through come through heavy rain blustery winds stormy conditions now if we do have a look at the ecm wf run as i said it is updating on Western central um it looks like they're going to be bringing in um, a faster eastern draft run and a sort of longer taking update from the eastern draft run with different parameters better time frame instead of the 24 hour intervals we have now so i'm looking forward to that when that does eventually sort of come live um and of course it does look like we're going to be getting the eastern draft ensembles as well on Western central but we're still on messier seal today and you can see generally still westerly to northwesterly winds chilly conditions and in the longer term, Eastern Dufferin is doing something very interesting, trying to build heights up towards Iceland, trying to turn the wind into a northerly. But I don't know if this is going to come off. I very much doubt it. We're not seeing a lot of support for it at this stage. Um, of course, we will be seeing colder air masses, but anything sustained is not looking particularly likely. And you can see right at the end of the run, you can see just 
repeatedly colder air masses and milder air masses moving through and right towards the end of the run you can see we're poised to go into a really quite cold north to north easterly wind with the minus 10 line lurking to our north but i doubt that we will be seeing that come to fruition uh, within the data and time frame perhaps beyond that we could be seeing rocking returning but i'm not seeing any massive signals at this stage for anything sustained in terms of cold for the next week or two but as i said looking very stormy so um doesn't it's not going to be um mundane weather like we have had recently now if we look at the G uh, uk met office run as well i wanted to show this because it is showing something very interesting within the next seven days because speaking about colder conditions it's not showing major blocking but it's showing the potential or you could see you seeing widespread snow um from a north or northwest similar to what we saw with storm arwin uh, and i have said that over the past past couple of videos that sort of pattern is uh, quite likely um if we do see a bit of amplification now i can see um storm malik uh, sorry storm uh cory moving through uh, storm malik moving through at the moment of course you can see that just across northern scotland real cold northwesterly winds bringing cold air back in with heavy rain snow over high ground and strong winds but as we move through all the way to 168 hours you see this low moves through and starts moving into europe we pull in a bitterly cold northerly wind look at those 850 degree temperatures minus five line moving through widely getting down to minus seven minus eight maybe even minus nine or ten across scotland and again if we zoom out to european look really cold northerly wind and we're not seeing massive application we're not seeing massive blocking but we're seeing some which is giving this northerly wind pattern of course we are at the peak of winter in terms of cold upper air temperatures so if we did see this pattern come off we wouldn't be surprised to be seeing widespread snow showers even to southern areas again not sustained but it would be a route to cold however and i know a lot of people are still looking for their first proper wintry conditions of um of our so-called winter now we do finally have a look at the gfs ensembles now you can see temperatures very much up and down seeing a sort of a typical zonal sine wave are you with milder sectors milder sectors colder sector milder sector colder sector milder sector at the moment colder sector moving through for the end of the month milder sector another colder sector through the 4th 5th of february mild another uh, milder sector moving through 6th or 7th and then 8th or 9th we're starting to see again another colder sector appearing a lot of scatter um so we can't say that for certain but that's sort of the trend we're seeing cold at times but also mild at times so there's going to be days of 10 11 degrees but there's also going to be days of three or four degrees with overnight frosts and wintry showers in the north and over higher ground and maybe not exclusively um so looking very up and down over the next couple of weeks and if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures you can see that's well reflected 10 11 degrees in a few days three four five degrees on other days and of course these are the ensemble members so they're not particularly high resolution so it could be even colder than that locally um as well and if we do look at the snow you can see there is some snow spikes but i wouldn't look too much at them at this stage because any snow we're likely to see is probably going to be convective of nature so very difficult for the um ensemble members which are at low, lower resolution um or what, very very low resolution compared to the short range models we look at um it's yeah not going to pick up on any significant um convection outside of maybe two or three days so unlikely uh, to be showing anything significant at this stage so we just have to keep an eye really on what happens but it's looking very very unsettled over the next couple of weeks um i know not what everyone's looking for some people look will really like the dry high pressure uh, and frosty conditions but i know a lot of people are looking for significant snow but it is livening up we are seeing stormy conditions um and we, yeah we're seeing consecutive storms in a or connective name storms in a single weekend which i have not seen before um may have happened um previously but i don't remember it i don't recollect it so yeah it'll be very interesting to see how this weekend plays out whether we do really see uh, very very dangerous conditions from this uh from storm quarry tomorrow which I can definitely see happening on the latest model runs. But, of course, we'll have to see how it plays out. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay safe out there because there could be some very dangerous conditions, especially through the north of the United Kingdom. Um, but, again, I'll see, you, uh, I'll see you again for another video soon.